Hi everyone, I'm Francois. To continue in the G-Shock series of watch reviews, I wanted to compare these two watches. I know last time when I unboxed this one, I did a quick comparison, but I wanted to go deeper in the comparison and show you a few of the functions of the watch itself. So let's get right into it because it's time to watch. As you may already know, G-Shock had been in existence since 1983. The analog version of these watches exists since the version AW500 came out in 1989. And quite frankly, I think they did a good thing because I like the functionalities of the digital watch, but I like the look and feel of an analog watch. And both of these have similar functions, of course, because they have the same module. So I'll be comparing just the physical attributes and then when I get to the functions themselves, I'll just of course choose one and, and you can be sure that the other one has the exact same functions. So physically, if we look at them, of course, the color differs, but I must say that this translucent look of this version here I think that it makes, it makes the, the resin a little less supple because I've been wearing this one since I've unboxed it and I must say that it's a little harder to flex on the wrist than the yellow one. The yellow one, I feel it's more supple, it hugs the wrist a little better. This one is very difficult to hug the wrist and it doesn't seem to be very, very flexible. I don't know if it's because I've just received it, but that's one main difference that I felt in regards to the two resins. It may be also the fact that it is in two colors. Maybe the resin on the yellow version here is different from the resin on this one because as you can see, this one is just one piece. And this one here has two pieces. So that may be the reason for it. If we look at the dimensions of the watch, both of them are identical, except for the weight. The yellow one has 64 grams and the translucent one has 62 grams. Both of them have 46 diameter, 46 millimeters diameter. But if you include the buttons, the diameter goes up to 50. Both of them have a lug to lug of 51. And of course, the, uh, the, um, the thickness is identical at 14 millimeters. Both of them have a lug width of 25.5. And if you look at the back, that 25.5 basically are identical because you can switch the straps if you want with the quick release. If you look at the buttons themselves, let's, let's take the yellow one for now. If you look at the buttons themselves, you'll notice that they're kind of hidden and they come out from the casing because they are part the, of the carbon core guard. Basically, the buttons are being protected by the carbon core guard itself. I don't know if you can see that, but it's kind of the resin infused of carbon core guard versus, and you can kind of see it right here, versus the resin that's really clean right there. So it's kind of a, a crown guard, let's say button guard protection that's included within the core guard structure. You have, of course, of course, the screw down case back, which basically makes sure that you have the full 20 bar of water resistance. The uh, screws, of course, come in front here. They may not be the same, but they're kind of aligned. So I guess that's just a question of aesthetics. And both of them have those two types, the same types of screws. The buttons themselves are the same type of resin as the bezel, but you'll see that, they, of course, they have the different color. 
If you notice the bezel here, because it's translucent, you kind of see the attachments. It's really clean. And of course, you see the difference between the lettering itself. The lettering is embossed here. You can see the mode right there. You can see the adjust here. And of course here, they're still embossed, but you have that color, that grayish color that's integrated in the wording itself. The dial, of course, is very different in its color scheme. Of course, the yellow pops out much more than the translucid, but it has the same structure. You see the, uh, the indices are kind of three-dimensional and slanted right up to, from the, uh, the, the, the base of the dial right up to the uh, chapter ring. The chapter ring is divided in the different minute tracks, I would should say. And of course, you have the different functions on the subdials. The subdial on the left, again, with the yellow, you have that pop of color that clearly identifies the different functions along with the lettering, the white lettering. The subdial at the bottom kind of stands out on the translucid because of the grayish, much, much more uh, pale grayish with that shiny um, ring. But the yellow version, of course, comes out really strong because, of course, it pops out with that yellow, yellow. But you can even see the lettering much better because of that contrast between the black letters and that yellow ring. On the translucent side, I don't even know if you, yeah, you may, may distinguish them. Alarm right there, signal right there. But again, it's really, really subdued. And the dial, the subdial, or the subsection, I should say, on the right, where you see the, uh, the digital area, you can see the letterings. Both of them are in white contrast from the black. And the digital display itself is kind of difficult to see on both of them. So they're similar in regards to the display and the type of contrast on the lettering. But the hands, you have a skeletonized hands on the yellow and you have a full uh, hand view on the, um, on the translucent version. But it's f in those, those, um, those hands on the translucent version are full loom. I'll show you a loom shot. It's not that great, but the light on both of them work really well. So that's why I guess they didn't focus on the loom. But what I really like about the yellow version is that G-Shock lettering at the 12 o'clock really pops out. And I have a preference on the yellow version. Um, one of my viewers indicated that that yellow is basically the Tour de France type of yellow and uh, Tissot makes these types of watches as well. And if you look for that, you'll see that they have the same exact color scheme. I called it my Batman watch. And if I can, I'll, I'll try to put a, a picture of my uh, shirt with the watch itself. But I think that Le Tour de France is much more suitable, let's say to an active watch type of, of, uh, of viewing. And on the right side, of course, the uh, translucent version, the G-Shock is really subdued as the rest of the color scheme. It's in line with, the, um, with, the, the, with, that, with that scheme. And quite frankly, depending on what you're wearing, it may be suitable, even if you're not seeing the, uh, the, the, the details itself, depending on what you're wearing, you might want to have a color scheme that's a little more subdued than a watch with yellow highlights. So those are the main differences. Quite frankly, both of them are really nice watches and I would wear any one of them. But as I said in my unboxing, I think that the translucent one is the one I'll be wearing a little more. I basically choose a watch for the different activities I do, and of course, then 
once I've chosen the activity, it all depends on what I'm wearing. So if I wear my Batman shirt, this version of the G-Shock will be on my wrist. If I'm wearing more casual clothing every day, this one, this translucent one will be my first choice. So at this point, let's use the yellow watch to show the different functions. And uh, this is the module number 5590, as you can see right there under the Casio name. And I encourage you to look at the uh, tutorials provided by WatchGeek. I'll leave the link at the bottom of the description. And of course, WatchGeek goes through the deep dive of these different functions. I'll just go on scratching the surface. So as you can see, basically, is the adjust button, the mode button, the start, and the reset. I, of course, chose this watch because they're, of course, very legible compared to the other translucent watch. You see, if you press the adjust button right here for a few seconds, it goes directly to your home time, indicated here, in my case, New York. You noticed as well, the hands shifted out of the way to make sure that you can view the display. And once you press on these buttons, you can, of course, change your time zone. Once you're done, just press back to the adjust and it goes back to the normal time. If you want to see what your um, world time in a pinch, let's say, you can change by just resetting, pressing the reset button here, and it shows you just quickly what time zone you are. And it shows you the time. Then it reverses back automatically to the home time. If you press once here on the mode button, you have the world time. So essentially it's just showing you specifically what uh, world time you are, but once you press these buttons, you can change that world time to the second time zone that you want. The stopwatch, of course, you can start and stop using the same start button. Then once you've stopped, you just press the reset button to make sure you reset it. You have a timer. In this case here, it's 20 minutes. You start the timer, you stop the timer, and then you reset to reinitialize the timer. In this case, it comes back to 20 minutes. You have the alarms. You can scroll through the different alarms. I have alarm two here. I don't know if you see that well or not. Alarm one, and then goes to the signal. But I can go back to the alarm here Alarm one, alarm two, three, four, five, and then we're through to the signal. The signal is essentially the hourly chime. Then back to alarm one. You noticed, you may not have noticed, but here, there are two bars here indicating that it's not active. And every time you change the alarms, five, four, three, two, one, if you look here, that bar doesn't change, meaning it's not active. If you want to activate it, you press the adjust and it becomes on. I don't know if you noticed, but let's see here. It's really difficult to see, but under the alarm sign right there, you have a hash mark indicating that you have an alarm that's active. If I press the adjust button to put it off, everything disappears. And it's the same for the signal. If I go to the signal, right here, signal, it's deactivated. That means every hour it won't chime. If I put it on, that signal hash mark appears right there. And then, of course, you can take it off. And then, another press of the mode button, you're back at your home. If ever you're at any point in the functions and you want to go back automatically to the home button or the home time let's say you just press on the mode for a few seconds and it goes back automatically 
So that's it in the different functions. So that's basically it in regards to the comparison between the two watches. Of course, this one, like I said, will be worn maybe a little less than this one, but I like both. That's why I bought them. So if you like these types of reviews, don't hesitate, press that like button. And of course, leave a comment. It's always appreciated. Of course, I encourage you to subscribe. And if you do subscribe, press that notification bell. So you'll be notified every time I come out with a review. Speaking of reviews, I've been wearing my next review since the beginning. This is the Master of G, Mud Master, and can't wait to show it to you. So thank you for tuning in and hope to see you next time.